Everybody wants something There's like no that. There's no fucking way, Universal. I don't want you getting the same handout I get. Handouts right. don't work, Joe. They don't. Handouts do not work. They do not work. For certain people, they work. But for certain, in a mass, they don't work. No. People are going to buy stereos and concert tickets and, mm -hmm. you know, that comes first. Even that episode of The Sopranos when the chick says, my phone's about to get turned off. I got no food and Tony gives her money. Yeah. And then she comes back. She goes, look at the shoes I got. Right. $600. And he goes, what happened to that? Ah, you know, you got to live yeah. a little. That's everybody's mind. That was my mind. Yeah, especially when you don't have anything. Yeah. What's important? Then all important? of a sudden you have... Twelve hundred dollars. Look at the fucking Jamie. Look at the credit card debt that this country's in right now. Did you see the credit card debt? All these four hundred dollar concerts. You think people no. have this money? No. What's the credit card debt like? It's fucking insane right now. People are living off their fucking cards, Joe. Since the pandemic, now it's becoming second nature. It's just a card. And I don't know if you've ever been in card debt. You're never gonna get out of it. Mm. Unless a chunk comes into your life. Right. Not your little $4,000 tax return. It's got to be a chunk. Or you're never going to get out of that fucking debt. I was in huge debt. Huge. Huge. Credit card? No, I got rid of all that. <laughs> what was your debt? <clears throat> you know, one day I woke up and I owed. Look at this. Maxed out inside America's credit card debt crisis and what we do next. And this is from uh, CNET. It says our 1.13 trillion in credit card debt, wow, is shattering lives. Everyday borrowers share how they're navigating this uniquely American debt machine. That's a lot of money, man. And the thing is they're giving credit cards to people that are too young to really understand debt. You're giving credit cards to 18-year-olds. No way. That's when I failed. No way. And you know what, even Doug, there's a lot of shit going on in colleges. Oh, the like college when you thing get is the worst. To now, that, that just, you know. That's the worst scam. The worst scam is the education loans. It's the worst scam. Worst. It's the worst because you're, you're convincing kids that this is the only way they're going to be successful in life, and a lot of them don't even wind up using it, and then they're saddled down with debt for the rest of their fucking life. And there's not a lot of good options other than that. It's not like there's a lot of other things that you could look to, like, this is a better way to go. Like, no. Like, college for a lot of people is, like, the only path that seems reasonably lit. Like that path, I can see where that path is. I'm gonna walk down that path, and then all of a sudden you're a hundred thousand in debt, a hundred and fifty thousand in debt. You're like, <gasps> and then you get a job out of college and it's for fifty two thousand dollars a year. You're like, oh my god, how am I gonna pay this money off? Well, you're not. You're not. You're never gonna. And you're they not. and they don't stop. No. In and the it, middle of and my it gets debt, interest. Doug, in the middle of my debt, a fucking student loan popped up. Really. And they weren't taking no deals. They weren't taking a penny on the dollar. They wanted the full three thousand dollars from fucking nineteen eighty something. Yeah. They're not fucking around those school loans. I have we have a friend, a mutual friend. Yeah. That decided not to get married. As much as he loved this fucking girl, broke up with her because of her debt. Yeah. He goes, if I marry her, yeah, fifteen grand a month. Yeah. Or something. She, you know, it was something crazy. It was yeah. something crazy, like her school loans. Yeah. He goes, I can't marry into that. We're never gonna. She has a kid in three years. That's on me. Right. Well, it's on you right away when you get married. And if she dies, you owe it. Yeah. It's one of those. Deals. It's on you. You yeah. can get married. And who knows how many? <laughs> what is the number? Like, what is the number that she owed? Do you remember? Big. Big. Hundreds. Attorney, and she started taking money and taking world trips. Because once you get those student loans, mm. you know, so yeah. you, again, it's a credit card mentality. I'm already in debt. Yeah. They're offering me this Let's on a go, credit card fun. to go to Europe, yeah. you know, Yay. one last blast to yeah. add to the fucking not mm -hmm. drama I already have. And then you got to find <clears throat> some insanely rich guy to rescue. Doug, I remember having no credit. Between you and I, I didn't know what credit was. Okay? I had no idea. I knew cash. I came from a cash society. First time I walked into the University of Colorado and signed those fucking loan papers and that Pell Grant paperwork, I think two days later I had a credit card with a $500 limit. I didn't even know how to handle it. Mm. And then they told me that you just call them and get the limit up. And I kept calling them. <laughs> <laughs> and then you don't know. Your limit's still stuck. And now you have to go to a casino to have the fucking pit boss. Call your Visa card.
Mm. That's how they always got money. Just give your credit card to the pit boss. Right. This is 30 years ago, though, not now, where you could just give the credit card to the pit boss and he could call Visa for you. When they ramp come it up. Back. Yeah, they ramp it up. Not anymore. Good news, Mr. Diaz. You got an extra $2,000. Booyah! Let's go. Let's go.